Alrighty. So I am currently in MS2. Um, I decided to make this video just because nobody's here right now, and um, I still wanted to try to give you guys some information. And I do know that quite a few of you guys can't necessarily make it um, on these days, but feel free to reach out to me if you do need um, extra help and you're willing to set up some kind of schedule. Um, I'm willing to do like quick 30 minute meetings on Fridays um, during the week. I'll try to work it into whatever I have going on. But I just wanted to make this video to kind of go over what this week's about. And I know I'm not looking at the camera and I, it's so weird because the camera's up there. I'm looking at the screen down here. The whiteboard is up there. Also, <laughs> this is jerry-rigged to the whiteboard and I feel like it could snap at any moment, but we move on. So first, let me go ahead, share my screen, and let's see, I want, yeah, we'll do this one. So I was going to go over, okay, yeah, week six. So I make these PowerPoints for every week, and I basically just go through them when we're at the actual PAL session. Um, and I like to sit down and ask you guys, you know, how you guys feel. So how do you guys feel about exam one? I know the general sentiment was it was hard. Um, I understand that exam one, I was like, I got to go home and take a nap after this. Um, but in general, I think people, uh, you know, if they didn't do so hot, they kind of knew why. Um, and hopefully you kind of reflected on how you studied for exam one and how to improve. Um, it's not a bad thing to say, you know, I could have done something better. In fact, that is, you know, what makes you open-minded. So be open to changing things. Um, that's all I have to really say about that one. Um, then we have just an outline of what last week was about. I feel like they're a little bit behind, so it's more of like what this week is. So um, this is just a general um, outline of what the slides was. So uh, like what, I think this is chapter eight. This is what chapter eight was. I went through the slides and I said, these are the key things that I know she's gonna ask a question about either on a quiz or an exam. And if you can look at this and I, you know, tell me what Watson and Crick did, what the, you know, what the major discovery was you can tell me about DNA structure. If you can sit down and walk me through all of these and with great detail, tell me everything, then you're in good shape. Um, I think that's about it. Um, but yes, this is, a, I think, a great tool for um, just double checking your knowledge and saying, oh, well, oh, shoot, you know, I didn't know, you know, radiation was a mutagen. I didn't know that. Or maybe I don't, I'm a little rusty on thiamine dimers. Maybe I need to go back into the slides and look at that. Or maybe I need to ask a question about that. It's totally okay. This is supposed to kind of like, just be a check, you know. Um, let's see. This is actually this week. So I think we are behind. <laughs> um, so we have horizontal gene transfer that we're going to do in lab. Really, really fun. I love lab 11. It was probably my favorite. Um, you're going to take a plasmid into some competent bacteria. You made it competent with CACL2. You're, after you make that cell competent and you insect, uh, insert that plasmid, you're going to allow the cell to express the genes on that plasmid. And you guys will see that Wednesday and Thursday. Let's see. Yeah, uh, I don't think you guys have done the catalase test. Shoot. Um, I think just the major things that I want to point out here, I know a lot of you guys do work in healthcare, which is great, um, that you guys want to like pursue nursing, most of you guys. Um, a common misconception is that antibiotics induce the resistance to them when it, that's not the case. Um, that's a major misconception among everybody. 
but um, but like everybody knows to take a full series of antibiotics, definitely. But it's when those antibiotics have killed another bacteria, and once that bacteria has been killed, the ones that are living understand, like see those dead bacteria, and then can encode for how to resist it. Uh, they, they pick up the free DNA from that lysed bacteria. Um, and how, because like, you know how you get sick and your body starts to produce antibodies eventually um, just to get over this thing that's attacking you. That's what the bacteria does, but it doesn't produce it in time to actually be effective against the antibiotic. But when there's leftover bacteria, they can pick up that information and code for a resistance gene. Um, and that's what an R plasma is. is. It's pretty self-explanatory with, oh, sorry, with an R means resistance. An S plasma is a little bit different. It encodes for a pilot. Why it's not a P plasma, I don't know. But it, it's going to encode for a pilot, which is that horizontal gene transfer as well. Um, the biggest thing that I had trouble with, with the difference between horizontal and vertical gene transfer, um, was just like, you, you, you're you talking about this like I'm supposed to already know it. Um, horizontal gene transfer is going to be within the same generation, whereas vertical gene transfer is going to be across generations. So your mom gave you genes. That is a uh, vertical gene transfer. A horizontal gene transfer is if I were to give you DNA, we exist in the same plane and we're not related, but I'm still going to give you DNA. Um, but that's usually accomplished by an plasmid or, you know, if I die and I'm like, eh, here's my DNA, and you're just like, sweet, pick it up, take it. Um, that would be something like an R plasmid that's then created um, after that cell picks up that bacteria, uh, that DNA. Let's see. Um, these are just some major points um, with lab 11. If it looks unfamiliar, don't worry about it. But just to kind of like get these terms like familiar, um, that way when you're sitting in lab and you, you have all this stuff being thrown at you, you know, it's not overwhelming. When you can look at that and say, I've heard of that, Let's think about it a little bit more. Helps a lot, trust me. That's especially with like reading the lab manual. I know Dr. B might drive it like crazy, but it's true. Like that's how I kind of got through those three hour labs where it's nothing but information is that you already know a little bit of the information before you come in. You're not trying to absorb it all at once. You're just trying to build on it at that point. Let's see, chapter eight. What? I must have made a terrible typo in this. Making plasmids in lab 11 trends. Okay, um, I'll fix that. <laughs> um, well, uh, the main things on here are just supposed to be, again, like those little headers that are like, I don't know what that is, um, but I think we covered it. Um, go and look into this and kind of like try to See what's going on. I don't think you guys have covered PCR yet, which is fine. Um, I think that's going to be soon, but um, unless you did, I don't know. That's a good question to ask, Dr. B. But anyways, um, just use it as a, you know, check your knowledge type of thing. Let's see. Lab 11, restriction enzymes. Ooh, palindromic sequences. That's a big word, but it's a simple concept. Do not get tripped up on that. Um, Delectophoresis. The biggest thing you'll need to know is size and charge on that one. Where is the shorter charge and where is, or sorry, where is the shorter size or the longer size and the higher or lower charge? Um, CRISPR, I really don't think you guys have done that. But I do recommend doing the worksheet um, for the PCR. Yeah, you guys really haven't done this. What else have we done? Oh, okay. That the big thing um that's going to be coming up is uh bacteriostatic versus bacteriocidal. A lot of people, you know, 
we learn about it in lecture, but it's hard to conceptualize in lab. Um, I'll help you guys out with that a little bit, but um, just understand what it means like on the cellular level as well. Um, you'll learn about it in lab 12 when you bring in your um, when you bring in your surfactants and stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty sure like the lab gets a little bit ahead of itself at this point of the semester. So don't worry too much about not understanding a lot of these words. Lab 10. Oh, okay. Milk lab, I'll talk about why not. But um, I, I have a dilution factor video on YouTube already. Um, I'll probably post it after this one. Um, what is pasteurization and how did your predictions contrary, uh, contrary? Yeah, contrast against, you know, what actually happened. Um, because I believe, yes, so Monday you got your lab eight results, but Tuesday you'll get them today. So uh, looking at those things will definitely help. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure lab nine is gonna be due soon. Um, I would recommend making the Venn diagram here and um, be able to narrate DNA extraction. Um, it's not too many steps. I wanna say you could probably do it in five. Um, you don't need to go down to the molecular level. Just know how generally, because then you can apply that concept to say like, okay, well, if, if, I if I'm using Dawn dish soap to extract the DNA, then I'm lysing the cell, and what, what else could do that? And what else could be used as a way to lyse the cell? And then you kind of start dipping into lab 12. So uh, just thinking about that, it's, the concept is what helps kind of make connections in lab. Um, lab 10 for, for replication and translating. I am dyslexic, so I hate codons, but it's because it's they're hard to mix up, even though I might understand the concept. So I recommend, you know, double checking, triple checking your work on this one. Um, what else could I say about this? It's relatively simple. You just have to know the only piece of lecture that you have to know is what gets translated when, what gets transcribed, and what gets copied. Um, and if you know those things, you're in pretty good shape for uh, exam two even, because it is a lot of DNA. Um, like if I were to give you DNA, mRNA, tRNA, rRNA, if I were to give you all of those things, could you put them in order and tell me like what comes first? what gets, what transforms into what. Um, that is a very good way to double check. Um, and if you understand those things before you even attempt this lab, perfect. Um, you'll understand, you know, what you're gonna use for the codons. You're gonna understand why this happens and it's just gonna be great. Uh, I, I promise you, if you look into lecture before you do this lab, it's a lot better. Um, let's see. Hmm. For I did want to make a couple of um, yeah announcements for the class. Uh, case study two, she's gonna get a little more picky with this one. Case study one is usually you know like oh you're just trying to figure out how to do this. Case study two is like you need to be an expert. Um, you need to be able to say why these symptoms happen. You know, and the big like I think the overall arcing thing. Um, is that a lot of students, including myself during this class, didn't necessarily take what the disease was once we found it out. They, we didn't take that and say, okay, how is this affecting the patient? We just started describing the microbe, but we never went back to the patient. That, that's the connection that you really have to make with case study two. Um, micro projects, I know it's a ways away, but I heavily recommend picking it now, making sure it's in, and even starting on it, honestly. If you're doing the 3D model, props to you, 
to never, but I would definitely recommend like starting making the model. And this gives you time that when you hit those snags, because you're going to hit snags, that you're going to be able to kind of recover from it. And the other side of that is that if you're doing a pamphlet, you do have to get it reviewed by Dr. B. Um, and if that's the case, then, um, well, when it becomes the week before spring break, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, shoot, we need to review this. And then spring break, you know, Dr. B isn't going to be on the clock. I'm, mm, I might be on the clock a little bit just because, you know, it's going it's to be near exam three. So, but anyways, um, you know, I can't review those projects and tell you the granularity that Dr. B wants. I can only tell you a general sense because I'm, again, I don't see any of your grades. I don't know the rubrics uh, other than what I remember from class. Um, just make sure that you, you know, if you want to do it early, the better, because it's just going to get a little bit more involved from here. Around the same time you have your micro project, you have your unknown project. And that's a beast. Be careful. <laughs> Tread lightly. Um, quiz three. Quiz I want to say I want to say it probably gets a few people just because they're not used to the terminology yet staying on top of lecture is a great way to be able to stay on top of quizzes they go very hand in hand and nothing is going to be like you you got lectured on it this morning and you're going to take a quiz now it's never going to be like that it's going to be like from a week ago it's just checking to see if you understand. And if you do miss quite a few points on a quiz, that's no big deal. I failed one of my quizzes. It was the one I got dropped, thank God, but uh, I did fail one because I just wasn't putting in the correct amount of time. And I said, okay, wow, I need to wake up and I need to say, I need to study this topic more because it, it's just not coming to me. And that's not, that's not a big deal. That's just, it's supposed to be a benchmark type of thing. It's supposed to tell you where you are, Instead of you figuring it out the hard way when you get your exam grade back, you're getting these little quiz grades back. Um, I did want to show, uh, let me, do, 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 do. Um, please let me go back to, I'm not going to cover review uh, week seven just because, mm, but I do want to show you guys a few ways that if you do feel really overwhelmed with the class, this is how I got through it. Um, hmm. Hold on. No, where did it go? Probably here. Yeah, this is a wonderful thing. I can post this if enough people want it. I just have to get a little bit of feedback because I don't want to flood you guys with a whole bunch of stuff that you guys don't want. So this is the assignment to do. You are going to put your assignment name when it's due, if it's, you know, one through whatever here, and how much of it you have done. If you're going to say, like, this is due, like, in a month from now, but I want to make it a decent priority and I don't have any of it done, then, you know, you would put kind of numbers to represent that. Um, that's the assignment to do. I do have this schedule here. It works if you want to do this on um, Google Sheets. I think I even have mine. I make this before every single semester. This helps me stay organized. It helps me visualize when I have those blocks of time. I actually need to update this to include here PAL sessions, but this helps me you know, this is what time I take to make material for you guys. I set aside this time to kind of try to think about what I'm going to do next. Um, you know, what time I have to get up in the morning, when I have work, things like that are all very important. And you can either use something like this or you can use something like this to help you stay organized. Um, and also, when it comes time to study for an exam, you see how I have these blocked out times of study time? I will now say, okay, from, you know, Friday morning from 8 to 10, I'm going to solely study biology. 
whatever it is. But in this, I'm going to specifically study chapter 11. Doing things like that helps you say, okay, I've studied chapter 11. I'm going to move on to chapter 12. And I'm going to move on to chapter 13. And now I'm going to be prepared for the exam. And now I can bring those questions to an office hour. I would also recommend, I pr actually printed this out and I wrote on the bottom when my professor's office hours are. That way, if I do get out of something early, if I have time to fit it in, then I could go down here and say, okay, you know, here's, here's my professor's office hours. If I have questions, I need to go ask them. Um, that is a great way to stay like on, on schedule. Um, this is a good daily planner. I, you know, I find it horrible, like just the bane of my existence, um, to try to figure out how to meal plan. Ugh. Um, this is a great way to organize everything you need to do. If you want to down here, substitute it for my assignment to do, that's fine. If you want to put this as like your household chores, that's also great. But this helps a lot and it helps this helps you to stay organized and then you know this could either be like something you've got to get done today or something you really really want to prioritize it's not necessarily do it's not necessarily like life or death if you don't do it but it's something you really really want to do or you can just say like I'm going to be nicer to myself I'm gonna um I'm gonna be determined all day I'm not gonna lose energy I'm not gonna lose steam whatever it is you can put it up here and um these I can make available to you guys. Um, oh, these are just my tips. Uh, another great one here. This kind of opened my eyes last semester to be like, you're not living in a sustainable way. Um, this should be eight times seven, which is if my brain can do math, it is going to be 56, 56. It should be 56. Um, eight hours a night. I know it's hard and you're like, well, I can get this one assignment done now and sacrifice two hours of my sleep. It's not going to be helpful. Sleep is where you retain your information. Um, I just suggest sleeping. Like if you know that you're, you have a headache and you're not going to be productive, just say like, you know, am I really going to be able to be, be able to complete this assignment in an hour like I would if I was fully rested? Or am I going to spend two hours on it in my delirious state? Um, you kind of have to just pick and choose your battles sometimes. And sometimes walking away for 20 minutes will make you that much more productive. Um, it's an, another thing called the pompadour technique. Pompadour, I'm pretty sure. Pom no, not pompadour, but pom. Uh, door Pom pomodoro uh-huh um this is a great way to kind of time yourself and say okay i'm gonna be really really focused i'm gonna get all my work done in 25 minutes i'm gonna take a short break for five minutes and once you you know rotate this through i think i think if you do it four times you get a long break so study for 25 short break for five and then you cycle through that, cycle through that four times. And then uh, after the fourth one, instead of the short break, you get the long break. And you can add tax, tasks down here. Th I literally just Googled this, but there's also timers down here. Yep, four by 25. And it gives you, it literally just sets it out for you. Um, I highly recommend that. Um, moving on to this, uh, the rest of this, um, this is how you're going to say, this is my study time. This is how many times I have to be in class, how many hours, how many hours I need to get ready in commuting, um, you know, what are the other things that I have to do with my life. Um, and then, you know, I had to be realistic with this one. I was probably spending way too much time on TikTok. And I set, I, I know it's like childproofing it essentially, but I set a timer for how long I get to be on TikTok every day. It's an hour. Sometimes I don't use it because I'm getting better at it. But that's definitely like, if you're, if you're, if you're like, I can't like, 
there are some people that I know <laughs> that can sit down and watch Netflix and they do not care. They will forget about everything else and they'll become so enthralled in whatever they're watching that whatever they had to do beforehand is out the window, it's gone. So, <laughs> so if you have a problem like that, I, mine was TikTok. If you have a problem like that, nip it in the bud now. Take that time to be productive during the semester and then summers and spring break are soon. I know it doesn't feel like it, but it's already week seven. After next week, we're going to be halfway done with the semester. It feels like time has flown. Um, so please, please, I know it's like YOLO. I'll just watch this movie and I'll feel so much better. Please. For the sake of your grade, for the sake of your sanity, you know, go back and say, okay, do I want a good grade on this quiz and feel good after the quiz and then reward myself with something like this? Or do I want to reward myself now, not do so hot in the quiz and feel bad about it afterwards? That's kind of how you have to think about it. I know it's a little bit more way down the line and less short term, but um, yeah. <laughs> There's not, there's not a whole lot you can do about, um, like, there's not a whole lot that you can do. What am I trying to say? I don't know. It's, it's just hard. It's really difficult to say, you know, but I've done so much already, you know, can't I just have a break? And the, <laughs> the answer is sometimes no, but, um, You'll get you'll get that break in satisfaction tenfold. Like you know, you ever get like your grade back and you're like, oh my god, I did it, I I did it, I did it all by myself. That feeling plus watching your favorite movie afterwards is probably the best feeling ever. Um, this helps you calculate the total hours you spend in a week, um, how many hours are in a week, and um how much how many hours are you left with at the end of the day mine was like exactly zero somehow I don't know how I did it but understanding that you know you maybe you need a little bit of you time too you know you just need to figure out what works for you and keeping your sanity through this course trust me um that's about all I have for that yeah I'm not uh, no, I won't go over that yet. Just because it's a little much. Um, that's about all I have. Um, that was basically what I was going to cover today. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please submit them in the Discord. But, um, yeah, I will see you guys in class on Thursday. And I saw you guys yesterday if you were in the Monday, Wednesday. But, yeah. I mean, I'm in here Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9.30 to 10.30. I put new posters in the classroom, so hopefully you can see those. Um, but yeah, if you're not on the Discord already, I implore you to join it. A lot of good information there. I post these slides there, um, and I do the most of my communication there. So yeah, all ready. So good luck today. Please keep your sanity in lecture and lab. Um, get something to eat. The pantry is always a good resource. I love the pantry. Sometimes I have Milano cookies, which is. So anyways, I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you around.